So Ramim Shafi, I'm really sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Ramim Shafi on one of my prior YouTube clips said, great video, can you please make one on hypersensitivities? I said noted, and that's what I've done here. Really high yield for USMLA, okay? This immunology type of question. It can be very annoying and complicated for everybody involved. I'll try to keep things simple and concise. Before we get into the question, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Share with one of your friends who's prepping for USMLE. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, and the link is down below. Now, let's start the question. 62-year-old woman, chronic hepatitis C. She has this discoloration of the lower extremities. She has decreased complement protein C4. Questions asking, pathophys of this patient's acute presentation is most similar to which of the following? Okay. Now, this image is showing us Levito reticularis, which is a lacy or marbled appearance of classically the lower extremities. And there's many different causes. Okay. But for USMLE, they want you to know chronic hepatitis B and C, as well as underlying malignancy. Okay. Now, you might say, hold on a second. No idea what cryoglobulinemia even is. Cryoglobulins are immunoglobulins or immune complexes, either or. I've read both. Immunoglobulins or immune complexes that deposit at cold temperatures. Okay. And in turn, we get this lacy or marbled appearance of the lower extremities, and we can get decreased serum complement protein C4. This is different from post-treptococcal glomerulonephritis and lupus, which can give you decreased C3. That's also high yield. But C4, if decreased, cryoglobulinemia, chronic hepatitis, malignancy, levito reticularis. Okay? This is a type 3 hypersensitivity because we have immune complexes, as I just mentioned. That's classically type 3. Okay? I'm going to go through the answer choices. Type uh, sorry, anaphylaxis, choice A, wrong answer. This is type 1 hypersensitivity. So type 1 hypersensitivity, also referred to as immediate hypersensitivity, is when you have an antigen binding to IgE molecules on the surface of mast cells and basophils. The IgE molecules will move into closer proximity to one another. The mast cells and basophils degranulate, release histamine. And that causes a cascade, eosinophil rec recruitment, prostaglandin production, and patient can present with uh, varying severity. It can be just merely a um, morbilliform rash, like a measles-like maculopapular rash. It can be full-blown anaphylaxis where you have hypo, tension, chills, fever, okay, classically bee stings, peanuts, of course. Uh, but that's type 1 hypersensitivity, wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Choice B is correct, Arthus reaction. Now, this is where it's challenging for me to keep things concise. Arthus reaction is where you inject a drug, and within three to five days, you're going to get a localized skin reaction. It's the three to five days that matters, okay? So if you inject a drug, let's say I am ceftriaxone, just as an example, and you, within minutes, get a rash in that area, that's not type 3. That's not Arthus reaction. That would be anaphylaxis, sorry, that would be a type 1 hypersensitivity. Obviously, anaphylaxis if you get hypotension, etc. But if you inject a drug and you get an immediate response within minutes, that's type 1 hypersensitivity, immediate. Three to five days later, you get a rash in that area, that's Arthus reaction. That's due to immune complexes, okay? Now, if you, let's say, inject a drug and then three to five days later get generalized arthritis, that's serum sickness, okay? That's immune complexes depositing in the joints. USMLE wants you to know serum sickness is high yield for uh, arthritis secondary to infection. So for example, hepatitis B and C, rubella, okay? If you get arthritis three to five days, they'll say the patient had fever and fatigue for a few days and now has generalized arthritis. That's serum sickness, okay? So arthritis reaction, a localized skin reaction, secondary to an injection and serum sickness, type 3 hypersensitivities. And USMLE will give you the same fucking question, but with malar rash of lupus. Malar rash is also type 3 hypersensitivity. So I gave you cryoglobulinemia. They will give you the malar rash of lupus. And then they're going to say, which of the following is most similar to this presentation? Answer, cryoglobulinemia. Okay, really good, really high yield. We're just going to move forward. Otherwise, this is going to become a very long video. But post-treptococcal glomerulonephritis, also a type 3 hypersensitivity. Choice C, contact dermatitis, wrong answer. This is type 4 hypersensitivity. Classically nickel on watches 
rubber, uh, weeds, poison ivy, poison sumac will give you linear vesicles. If they mention linear vesicles, uh, that is poison ivy, poison sumac, avoidance of weeds, uh, sunscreen contact dermatitis, okay, showing up within a few days. Um, the PPD test, the, the Montau test, the PPD test for tuberculosis, that's type 4 hypersensitivity. But what differentiates contact dermatitis from uh, atopic dermatitis type 1 is that contact dermatitis will take generally a few days to start and a few days to go away, even after you've removed the offending agent. Ty, uh, sorry, choice D, uh, graft versus host disease, if you're forced to choose, you're going to choose type 4 for this one. This is a long discussion in and of itself. But basically, almost always, it'll be a bone marrow transplant. It can be liver transplant. But it will be a bone marrow transplant, almost always, which contains T cells that you're giving to an immunodeficient host. Okay? So the graft contains T cells. You're going to give that to the immunodeficient host, the recipient. And those T cells within the graft are going to attack the host as foreign. Okay? Patient can present with fever, chills, hepatosplenomegaly, multifarious presentation. That's the mechanism they want. Choice E, heparin-induced thermocytopenia. This is type 2 hypersensitivity. So heparin given classically following DVTs. That will cause antibodies against the heparin platelet factor 4 complex, heparin hyphen PFF4 complex. Type 2 hypersensitivity is when you've got antibodies against your own tissues slash cells slash receptors, okay? So if we have antibodies, let's say in Graves' disease, against the TSH receptor that activate that receptor, type 2 hypersensitivity. If we have antibodies against parietal cells causing pernicious anemia, that's type 2 hypersensitivity, okay? Whereas type 3 hypersensitivity is antibodies against an antigen in the serum, and then the antigen-antibody complex deposits in the tissues. And we said that's cryoglobulinemia here. Okay, as I said at the start of this clip, the challenge is to keep this concise. We can do a long presentation that nobody will watch. We can do a short presentation that people will think is too cursory. So I'll try to keep things concise. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.